When you read about VBA programming, you might see the writers refer to subroutines and functions. Even though some authors use the two terms synonymously, they actually mean different things. The generic name for both subroutines and functions is a procedure. So what's the difference between a subroutine and a function? At the most basic level, the difference is that a function returns a value, such as in a formula, and a subroutine doesn't. Take, for example, the sum worksheet function, which adds a set of values together. In this case, if I were to type equal sum C7 to C11, I would get the sum of the numbers from cells C7 to C11. So sum is a function. If you create a function in a VBA code module, you can use that function in your workbook. By contrast, a subroutine doesn't return a value. That's not to say you can't affect cells or generate other output using a subroutine. Certainly you can. But it does mean that you can't refer to a subroutine in a worksheet formula. You create a subroutine by going into the Visual Basic Editor and creating a code module. Then in the code module, you type sub to indicate you want to create a subroutine, a space, followed by the subroutine's name, which has no internal spaces and has to start with a letter. And in this case, I will just call it two trees. So far, I've been typing the open and close parentheses, but when Excel sees that I have the sub keyword at the beginning of a line, if I press enter, Excel gives me a pair of open and close parentheses on its own because it knows that they have to be there. In this case, the parentheses are empty, but in some cases you'll need to put values in there. I'll show you a situation when you need to do that later in this movie. So for the subroutine, I'll just keep it simple. I will have it display a message box with the message welcome to the two trees monthly reporting workbook. When I press F5, Excel runs the macro and displays the message box. Functions are similar to subroutines, but they're different in that you need to give the function a value or values to work with. To do that, you tell Excel what to call the value or values it's receiving and what type of data it is. I'll describe all the variable types that you can use later on in this course. For this function, I assume that two trees make some sales through a broker, which in turn makes a 15% commission. With that in mind, I'll create a function that calculates the payment due to the broker. I'll start by typing function, broker. As a convention, I make my function names all capital letters. The Excel program, for example, with the sum function, sum if function, and so on, are all written with capital letters, so I do that for mine as well. Some other programmers, though, like to have their function names either in mixed case or in all lowercase so they can distinguish them from the existing worksheet functions. It's your call. I prefer to do it this way. After I type broker, I type a left parenthesis. Now I have to tell Excel what to call the data it will use and what type of data to expect. I'll call the input data CUR total, which means total, and of the currency type. And this is just a naming convention. I haven't actually said it's a currency value yet. I do that now by typing as currency. The currency data type is designed to hold monetary values, so I like to use it for sales totals and such. When I close the parentheses and press enter, Excel creates the function code block. Now I can type the steps to manipulate the data to generate the result I want. In this case, I just want to multiply the input value by 15% or 0.15, so I will add the statement broker equals CUR total, the name of my variable, the name of the input to the function, times 0.15. Notice that I typed the name of the function to the left of the equal sign here. I did that because one of the conventions of Excel VBA is that you use the function's name as the variable to which you assign the calculations result. Now if I press Alt F11 to go back to the main program, I can use the function that I just defined in a formula. So for example, if I want to calculate the broker commission here, I can use Excel 2007 formula autocomplete and give it the input of cell C7, press return, and there I have my formula. Because I put the formula in the first cell of an Excel table column, Excel filled the formula into the remaining cells in the table column. If you want to create a function that accepts more than one input, you can define them in the function declaration statement. So let's say that I want to use an example here on the sales tax worksheet. In this case, I need to multiply my unit sales by the tax rate to find the applicable sales tax. To create a function that will do that, press Alt F11, and then in my code module, I'll create a new function, function sales tax, and it will accept two values. First, CUR sales as currency, and double rate as double, and it will return its value as a double. When I press enter, Excel creates my code block. To perform the calculation, I type in sales tax, and again, I'm using the name of the function as the variable that will return 
a value to the worksheet. And to the right of the equal sign, I type double rate times CUR sales. When I go back to the worksheet, I can click in cell here and type equal sales tax with my inputs of C7 and D7. Note that because in one case there is zero tax rate, perhaps a tax abatement program for garlic, that the sales tax calculates to zero. Everything else multiplied by either 4%, 2.5%, or the appropriate value. Now even though the sales tax function returns its value as a double precision decimal value, which can have thousands of numbers to the right of the decimal point, I formatted these cells using the accounting format. I did that to force Excel to display exactly two values to the right of the decimal. Subroutines and functions are the backbone of your VBA programming toolkit. Remember that you use a function, such as these two here, to return the result of a calculation just like you would in a worksheet formula. You can use subroutines to manipulate data in worksheets, but without returning results you use in a formula.